right, all right, all right. Adventurous Impulse. Mm. Always playable. Always reasonable. Helps fix your man in the early game. This is a... Uh, this is supposedly a three-color format. So Impulse being able to, like, find your colors seems more relevant than usual. So it helps fix your, your man in the early game. And then the late game helps you find your uh, your key creatures in a mutate format. Like being able to bin your creature that doesn't have mutate for like another mutate trigger. Could be really, really strong, huh? Yeah, usually I'm a fan of uh, Adventurous Impulse. In limited and constructed. And uh, I think it's good in this format. Almighty Brushwag, one minute for one one trample. You can pump it and give it plus three plus three. This seems like a good card to mutate onto, huh? Because these are a good set of abilities. Like a nice couple of abilities to have on a larger creature. And then you want efficient bodies to mutate onto anyway. Without mutate, one mana one ones are kind of bad. It is a mana sink in the late game. So it's like, not the worst one mana one one ever, but that's something you're actively looking to put in your deck in most cases. Auspicious Sterix. Five mana for a 6-6. Six, six. Mutate. Five and a green. When this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards. With X the number of times this creature is mutated, put those permanent cards onto the battlefield. So this is the sort of mutate card that like really appeals to me. Because you're always getting value. This mutate ability is always going to give you some kind of value. It's not technically card advantage the first time you mutate. Because you're augmenting another creature that's already in play. But it seems like it would get pretty wild pretty quickly. It's not Namlin permanent cards. That's fine. That's still value. <laughs> it's an uncommon, yeah. The other cards do stay exiled, yeah. In limited, though, most of your cards are going to be permanents a lot of the time. So it's gonna be hard to like deck yourself with this, even like even if you have multiple triggers. If it hit, hits land, it puts it into play untapped. Yeah. And uh, with that's not gonna be super relevant, like the first time you play this or mutate it or whatever, because it's probably gonna use the bulk of your mana. But there are cheaper mutate costs, and there are things that reduce the cost of mutate. So you could potentially have a turn where you get to chain multiple things together. Do I think this is a first pick? I mean, it depends on what else is in the pack. But I think it's a very powerful card. I'd be, like, pretty excited to pick this early on. Build around it. You're not taking this over, like, a rare bomb. But I could see taking this over... I mean, I mean it's a value spell. So limited, limited value spells tend to be as good as or better than limited removal spells. Because it helps you grind through your opponent's removal. So I think taking this over, like a common removal spell, is totally fine. Sweet card. Borderline interesting for constructed. Borderline. We'll see if there's a constructed mutate deck. Barrier Breach, two and a green, instant, XL up to three target enchantments with cycling. <laughs> Fuck your enchantments! Not a ton of enchantments in this limited format, huh? Cycling, though. <laughs> Cycling. Why is that in green? green? Green does a good job of beating up on enchantments. It's had some, uh... Was it Tranquility? Destroyal enchantments? You wonder if this is constructed playable. Three minutes is a lot, but I mean, if you ever do hit multiple enchantments, you feel like a god. And there are some enchantments that are like worth a removal spell. Like you, you can't just like let Elspeth's resolve, right? You can't just like let the whole saga resolve. You kind of have to pop it. 
Bristling Boar, 3 and a green and 4-3. Can't be blocked by more than one creature. Yeah, give this Menace. It's just unblockable. Common little synergy. Reasonable card. Not like an early pick or anything. Totally reasonable. Oh, you think the exile part is weird for green? I got gotcha. you. Charge of the Forever Beast, two and a green, sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, reveal a creature card from your hand. Charge deals damage to target creature or planeswalker, equal to the real card's power. Hmm. At sorcery speed and like needing a creature in your hand. I don't know, removal's removal, but this doesn't super appeal to me. Usually when I top deck my removal spell in the late game, I want it to be usable, right? I don't want to be like, ah, fuck, I don't have a thing. I already played my thing last turn. Now I'm like punished for playing my card. Hitting walkers is good, but like you're not playing this in constructed. And how many planes walkers are there in this limited format, right? All right, classification five green green enchantment aura enchant creature manages the battlefield tap enchanted creature and then enchanted creature gets plus 20 plus 20. so if you are uh, if you're cheating this into play with uh what storm storm something storm herald I played, I played this card so much and I still had to look up its name. When Storm Hail enters the battlefield, return any number of target auras from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to creatures you control. And then you exile those auras at the beginning of the next end step. So if you do that to cheat it in classification, you still need something else. You still need something to untap it. Or you can like fling. You can fling the, the creature at the opponent's face. But it does need a third piece of the combo to work. You do need to do a little bit of work for your supper. The jellyfish. You could enchant the jellyfish. That requires you to put jellyfish in your constructed deck, which is a little embarrassing, but uh, you could do that. In limited? Oh yeah, this is a fine limited card. Is it? <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> let me let me think a little bit longer. So it's imminently chumpable if you don't put on a creature that like already has trample, and you don't get to attack the turn that you finally play it. And then they can always just like kill it or bounce it or something. Yeah, the fact that you give your opponent a full turn before you even get to attack with it is pretty rough, even with the plus twenty plus twenty. People will die to this card, but that doesn't make it a good card, necessarily. Devoted Druid? Devoted Druid's hilarious. Yeah, I think this might not be good in Limited, even. Top tier meme card? Yeah. I'll be trying to meme with it. I'll do my best. But it's definitely a meme. Oh, that is good flavor text. Turns out the case of the flattened outpost and the case of the miss missing kitten were related. <laughs> talk now. Talk later, row now. I really like this classification art. Right? Like having the having the the boat there for scale makes it so much more terrifying. Those vapid eyes. Ilharg? It doesn't work with Ilharg, right? Oh, you're talking about if you put Storm Herald into play with Ilharg? That's cute. <laughs> That's cute. That's a lot of work, you know, like, usually just attacking with Ilharg is pretty good. Usually you'd, you'd rather just have a car, card to put into play that doesn't take as much work, but that does work. Essence Symbiote, 1 in a green, 2-2. Two, two. 
Whenever a creature you control mutates, put a 1-1 counter on that creature and you gain 2 life. That's kind of sweet. Most limited decks want to have like some number of 2-mana two 2-2s two in there anyway, so this doesn't need to trigger very often for it to be like a fine and fine include. Never going to be like an early pick though. You're not, you're not going to pack one, pick one this. It's going to be something you get like fairly late on to fill up your curve. And then the more mutate you have, obviously, the, the more interesting it becomes. Excavation Mole, 2 and a green, 3-3. Three, three. Trample, when it enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Sure. 3-minute three 3-3s three are always fine. This has, like, some other stuff going on. Exuberant Wolf Bear, 3 and a green for a 4-4. Four, four. When it attacks, you may change the base power and tar toughness of target human you control to Exuberant Wolf Bear's power toughness till end of turn. Sweet. Have two 4-4s. Four, It's a very roly-poly wolf, huh? Thick is the word. Yeah, this card's cool. Kind of aggressive. There's a few cards that reward you for having multiple creature types, too. For having humans and non-humans. This just, like, plays really well there. Fertile is a reprint, but it can fix multiple times, so that plays well for the three-color theme that's going on. You can also like run this out and then mutate onto it and still remove the counters. But keep the um the mutated creature's stats. And like still get your land value. In a generic limited format, is a vanilla 3 mana 3 3 or a vanilla 4 mana 4 4 better? Uh well a generic limited format doesn't really exist. They're about similar. It's gonna come down to like where you have the hole in your curve, right? Four four dodge is more removal. Yeah. But like, if the limited format in question's got some quality four mana four fours. Also, the higher up on your curve you go, the the less cards you can play that cost that, right? Cause you can't just play all top end stuff or you'll never get a chance to play your shit. So, like, would you rather have four three mana three threes or four four, man, four mana four fours in your deck? And then, like, what about five of them? It starts to it starts to seem a little different. Then five drops, six drops, so on. Anyway, here we are on fly catcher. Drafted. Five minutes for a 3-5 when it enters the battlefield with your choice of a Vigilance counter or a Reach counter. Oh, that's the kind of spider I can get behind. So there are Vigilance Synergy cards, so if you end up green-white, then this suddenly becomes like a pretty strong card. There's the, the Toughness Matters enchantment. That means like you're attacking for six with this thing, six, six damage Vigilance. There's a Vigilance Pumper. And then when, I mean, obviously green is always in the business of having giant spiders. So five mana for a 3-5 reach is just always good. It's always a thing you want. For blood. Yeah, card's sweet. Fucking love this art, too. It's really dynamic. This is like a master class on perspective here. Seems really hard not to fuck this up. Anyway. Fully grown. Two and a green. Instant. Target creature gets plus three plus three until end of turn. Put a trample counter on it. Hmm. So as a normal combat trick in the early mid game, this isn't that exciting. Like you're getting some damage in, but the trample counter isn't going to be super good on a creature in the early mid game. It's going to be good on a creature in the late game. We've got a real big chonker that you can give Trample to. Like 
But this is obviously better than like just plus three plus three and trample, which is what we what we've normally gotten for this mana. So all these tricks with the like the, the permanent residue value are pretty strong. Gem Razor, four mana. Mutate one green green, reach trample. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment opponent controls. So this one looks like it was priced for constructed. Pop some sagas, attack for four. Got a few extra useful abilities with reach and trample there. Card is pretty strong. Yeah, pretty good. I really like the art too. I'm like fuck this crystal in particular. This is like almost terrifying. No tears. This card, this card isn't at worst case a three mana four four trample, because that requires you to have a creature in play. This card is worst case a four mana four four reach trample, which is not the worst worst case ever, but it is much worse than a three mana four four trample. Yeah, yeah, pretty good for Rexage. Anguris, Armored Killer. Four mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, it's the same thing. <laughs> Close Tone Recluse. Two and a green. Reach when this creature mutates. Put two 1-1 one, one counters on it. Ooh. The mutate is four. I guess four mana give a creature plus two plus two in reach isn't like that impressive. But this is like a pretty good one to mutate onto. Because like three mana for a 2-3 with reach is like already re reasonable stats. You mutate it onto it once, it starts to look pretty juicy. Yeah, it seems like an amazing spider, yeah. Greater Sandworm, 7 mana, can be blocked by creatures with power 7 or less, cycling 2. I think this is a reprint. It was pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonable last time around. Often you'd play like one or two. Cycle in the early game, play it in the late game. Yeah, that Altar is sick. Honey Mammoth. Oh man. <laughs> this is so good. Who, who came up with this? Who came up with this creature? Oh man. Four green green six six. When it enters the battlefield, you gain four life. So crawl worms are like, I mean they're pretty unexciting in general. But, like, if your green deck wants a chonker at the top end to have larger creatures than the opponents you can attack. So you win the creature mirror, the, the creature mirror when you're pulling only as of, like, a 5-5 five five or something. And then the uh, the gain for life is, is, is kind of nice for limited, too. That's a nice thing to have stapled on there. You're getting beaten down by flyers in the air. Or your opponent's going wide and helps you stabilize. It's a fucking heffalump from Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, right? Heffalumps and woozles. Heffalumps and woozles. Steal honey. Beware. All right. Hornbash Mentor. Two in the green. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, put a trample counter and target non-human creature you control. And then three mana to put a woman counter on each creature you control with a trample. Yeah, so uh, we've seen like a cycle of these cards. This one's fine. This one is like obviously not as exciting as giving another creature flying or 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 lifelink. And it's not as good as like pumping a creature with lifelink. But but it is in green. And I think green is more likely than the other colors to end up in a board stall, which makes the activated ability a little bit better. And pumping your trample tramplers is like what you want to be doing in the case of a board stall, right? That's how green is gonna eventually bash through. So you sit there with like your giant spiders holding off whatever the opponent's doing while you like slowly grow your shit. Anyway, next up, Humble Naturalist. One in the green for 1-3 that can add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell. Sure. 
I guess this helps you like splash off color mutate bombs. Which is why you have Porky Parrot there. Ivy Elemental, Green X, get X11 counters. Creatures with 1 1 counters seem like really good to mutate onto. Because then you keep the mutated creatures power and toughness, but like the 1 1 counters stay. Not a constructed level synergy. Oh man, what about Krasis and Constructed? Mutate onto Krasis, Hydrate Krasis? Is that a thing? Does that excite anybody? I'm kind of excited. Kogla, the Titan Ape. Three, green, green, green. When the Titan Ape enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Sure. When it attacks, destroy artifact. Destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. For two mana, you can return a creature you control to its owner's hand to give Kogla indestructible. So we've seen similar cards to this at Uncommon, the, the bounce to get indestructible. And that was a uh, two green green for a four three, and it was just like one in a green, and you could return any creature you control. And that card actually saw a little bit of constructed play, even though it was an uncommon and like costed for limited. Because it allowed people to like rebuy Plukronos and use Plukronos every turn, stuff like that, rebuy your value stuff while giving devotion. Six mana is a lot though. Devotion is a mechanic in this format, in the standard format. Yeah, Team Your Saber Tooth. It's still an EDH staple. That doesn't surprise me. You can Castle Garen Brig this. You can. Hard to Castle Garen Brig this out and then like still have the two mana to give it indestructible. But when you play it, if it just like eats your opponent's creature, that's pretty strong. Play with the Boar God, sure. Note that it doesn't uh, get the attack trigger if you're putting it into play with Ilharg. Because it has to be like declared as an attacker to get that. And it's got to be a human to bounce, yeah. That's pretty situational. How many humans are even worth bouncing, huh? It's flavorful. It's flavorful for the, the Kong homage, but... Overall, I don't think I'm excited about this Legendary Ape. I'm excited about that art, though. That horizon, all these air balloons. Really evocative. Lead the Stampede, two and a green, sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. Oh, this is a reprint, right? Get all those creature cards to your hand. Usually solid. Draw some creatures, why not? Yeah, if it interacted with Uro better, that'd be a lot more exciting. Like, even if it was just like a 7-7. Seven, seven. Migration Path, 3 and a green. Search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. And then it has Cycling. So, uh... So Explosive Vegetation is a card that I have played unironically and constructed recently in both Pioneer and Standard. And this is a card that does explosive veggies and then it also has cycling. So at a certain point you run out of basics, right? Depending on your deck. And uh, at that point, this card's sick. This card's sweet. Because you've thinned all, so like the drawing a card is awesome. You've thinned all the lands out of your deck. And then, uh, yeah, and then you don't have a dead card. So this card isn't going to excite everybody, but it's going to excite me specifically. <laughs> it's going to ex excite other people that, uh, that enjoy ramping, that enjoy casting a ramp spell every once in a while. And then obviously this is good enough for limited too, right? If it's good enough for constructed, it's usually good enough for limited. This one can fix for multiple colors, and it is a tricolor format. And it's a cycling format, so... Bonus. Love it in cube? Yeah, sure. Why not? My Grittery Greenhorn. <laughs> three and a green, three, four. Some excellent uh, Philip Berberian art. 
he does a really good job with all these little twisties, all this like high amount of detail. He works uh, traditionally too. Whenever this creature mutates, sit your library for a basic land card. Put it on the battlefield tapped and shuffle your library. It mutates for two and a green. So you play a one or a two drop, and then you mutate for this on three. Ramp yourself up to a to a five costing mutate card. And then that also ramps you. Not too shabby. Yeah, this card's good. And then, like, it also plays really well with... Uh, the uncommon we looked at, the the Starix. Like it chains into this one really well. Pulls lands out of your deck, so like the Starix is gonna hit um permanence more often. Plays well with Fertilid, yeah. Lana War Elf mutated this on turn two. I could see it. I could see it. In Pioneer or uh, or Historic, right? <laughs> Monstrous step four and a green target creature gets plus seven plus seven until end of turn. Up to one other target creature blocks it this turn if able cycling. I'm usually not a big fan of these like situational removal spells or like if you're lucky you can like kill the opponent. I really like it. I like really like the the cycling aspect though. There's a lot of situations where this card is just not very good. Five mana is a lot to pump something. But in those situations, I'm going to cycle it. Not bad. I'm, I'm still not going to be drafting this card super early. But I'm way more likely to include it in my final deck. Moscote Gariak, 2 to green, 2 4 Vigilance. Yeah, I mean, there are some Vigilance Matters cards in white. It seems pretty fillerish, though, without those. Mythos of Brokos. Two green, green. So this one's got broken in the name. So it's got to be good, right? If, um... If Bugmana was spent to cast a spell, search your library for a card, put that card to your graveyard, then shuffle your library. And then you can return up to two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. So if um, so if you sp spend soul time mana for this thing, you're getting a diabolic tutor plus value plus return a per another permanent from your hand. I guess it's not diabolic tutor because it's not any kind, right? It's not like a it's not returning any any two cards, just permanent cards. I gotta imagine. I gotta I gotta say, I don't really know how to make this card busted. I think this is more of an Ali Eldrazi card than a Caleb card. I bet he'll figure out a way to like make this go infinite. Do some crazy shit. <laughs> Fetches Storm Herald and pitches classification. <laughs> All you need is Sultai with your like red combo deck. Oh man. Plummet. Does what Plummet do. Return LEDs with Mythos of Prokos? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't see how to how to abuse this card. Maybe there's a way. Maybe someone will figure it out. But it, it doesn't excite me. It excites me less than the other cards in this cycle. Ram through, one in the green instant. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. If the creature you control has trample, excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller. That's kinda sweet. I think this is a reasonably, reasonably high pickup once you're in green, right? Not a bad card at all. You don't need tramplers for it to be good, but like, sometimes you're just gonna have a filthy turn. Sudden spinnerets, green instant target creature gets plus one plus plus one plus three until end of turn. Put a reach counter on it, untap it. Meh. Meh filler is meh. I would treat this as a sideboard card and boarded an empty opponent's got like a lot of flying going on. Green's got better answers to flyers though, I think. Survivor's Bond, one in the green, sorcery, choose one or both, return target human creature card from a graveyard to your hand. Return target non-human creature card from a graveyard to your hand. 
yeah, so uh, this is yet another card that rewards you for having uh, split your creature types between humans and non-humans. Adorable art, too. If any of y'all haven't seen uh, Gorillas in the Mist and you want to have a really sad time, you should watch that movie. That's what that art kind of reminded me of, anyway. Thwart the enemy, two and a green, instant, prevent all damage. That would be dealt this turn by creatures your opponents control. Usually, usually fogs, even if they're fogs that let you take advantage of them in combat, are a little too situational for my tastes. I'm not going to be playing this card very often. I will, how, however, lose to this card at least once. <laughs> Titanoth Rex, 7 green green, trample, cycling. When you cycle it, put a trample counter on target creature you pr control. So it's another. So this is the, the green version of the... Uh, of the permanent value cycling chain. Two mana, two mana is not bad, but uh, <laughs> casting it is a little bit more expensive. On the plus side, for fucking nine mana, you do get an 11-11 trampler. It's very hard to lose after untapping with an 11-11 trampler. The lifelink reanimation in black. Yeah, that's only an uncommon too. Seems doable. Get it down as early as, as turn five. Yeah, you don't you don't actually need a way to bin it too because it's got cycling. So you just cycle it and then reanimate. That's gonna happen fairly often, huh? Vivian, Monsters Advocate, three green green legendary planeswalker Vivian. We got some static abilities here, but these are static abilities that aren't like gotcha static abilities like Narset that you just like walk into. Instead, they are, like, very specific to the person that controls them. I think they're a lot better way to, way to do static abilities on Planeswalkers. And this one says, you may look at the top card of your library anytime, and you may cast creature cards from the top of your library. Mm. So not bad. Not terrible. And then the plus one is you get a 3-3 green beast, and you get your choice of a vigilance counter, a reach counter, or a trample counter on it. So not hasty like uh, like current Vivian, or current Nissa rather, but uh, but still pretty good. Still some pretty good tokens. And then the minus two is when you cast your next creature spell this turn. Switch your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost. Put it on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. That's some good value. That is some good value. And it's search. It's not like a random thing. So you can get some like real nice toolboxing going on with that. Five mana for three loyalty. Yeah, but it upticks to four, right? There's a lot of value here. You're, you're also playing it in green, so you can like ramp it out pretty early. You want this to enable combo in modern green white? I don't think. Well, mo modern green white uh, is already like pretty combo heavy, and five mana is way too much. Modern green white's killing you like on turn three with their combos so probably not I see this card more fitting into like elves or something that sort of thing is playable all right wilt one in the green destroy an artifact or enchantment with cycling yeah totally reasonable card right totally solid and here we are the gold cards 